Okay guys, so I was offered a key for this game called Rift Storm. And before you guys jump out and say, hey, oh my gosh, sponsored content, um, this isn't. So as a creator, you can sign up for a bunch of platforms that give you keys like crazy. And it's basically, it's automated, automated, right? Where it's, is does your channel fit a certain criteria? If yes, then email a key. That's essentially how it works. So I go through and I try to filter some of these and get ones that look interesting or like they're at least a little bit further along or they have some polish to them because to be frank, there's a lot of very early like proof of concept stuff that comes across creator email boxes and it just, it doesn't really work. But this one did catch my eye. So this one's called Rift Storm and it has some promise. It reminds me a lot of Kill Squad when I jumped in and I first started playing. Now there isn't a lot in the game right now. This is a pre-alpha play test, but the game seems like it has a good identity and a decent skeleton that they're going to continue to build upon. So Rift Storm is a co-op top-down shooter where you take the role of a secret operative that hunts down supernatural creatures, explores new worlds and collects new loot. So like I said, not much in the game right now, but if you like what you see in this video, you can go out to Steam, you can request access yourself, and on the next wave where they send those things out, you have a chance at getting in. So we're gonna talk about first impressions and sort of go through what's in the game today and what might be beneficial for them in the future in terms of just suggestions, things like that. So to get started, um, when you first fire up the game, you're gonna be placed into a tutorial. You're going to play one of the heroes, one of the classes. So you're going to play as Starling. Starling is this balanced soldier who starts off with an assault rifle and a handgun and really kind of feels that like secret agent type of like role. The other two classes are Atlas, who is a tanky character, has a shotgun and a handgun, reminds me a lot of like some sort of like siege type person in Rainbow Six Siege, um, very like frontline heavy. And that makes sense because they're a tanky character. Then you have Icarus, who's the long range marksman who starts off with a rifle and a shotgun, high damage, lower health. So each one of these classes comes with three skills and three passives. So these skills are going to unlock over time as you level up, which we'll get into that in a moment. And they grant some pretty powerful effects. So Starling, for instance, she can toss a large grenade that then damages and stuns enemies. You can have two of these charges like in the holster. So whenever anything gets kind of crazy in your missions, you can throw these things out. It'll blow up, it'll stun everything. And it's sort of a get out of jail free card. She also has a mania skill that gives her a large damage buff. So that's another thing that kind of she can take advantage of, which I think is really cool. And then, like I mentioned, they also have three passives and these passives more, more or less like support their identity. So Starling being a soldier, Atlas being tanky, and then Icarus being long range. Each one kind of props up what their um, role is on the team, right? Because this is a co-op based game. So the game revolves around you going to a kind of command center and then going and picking from four missions that are available right now. So two are pretty low level. These are built for like starter solo play. One is more for like intermediate play. And then one requires co-op in its very top end. Now each mission has a combat power requirement in order to start. If you're too low, then you cannot start the mission. Now this combat power requirement directly ties to the items or gear that you're wearing. So as you go out and you complete the starter missions, you're going to get items that are going to drop weapons right now. There is an equipment section, but those are under development. It's not available. So right now you can equip two weapons and this sort of makes up your combat rating as well as I think a little bit that comes from your actual level. So that's out there right now. And if you don't meet a combat requirement rating for a mission, you can't start the mission. So it kind of forces you to run the starter ones and then work your way up to the intermediate one and then grind the intermediate one until you're at a point where you can co-op with other players and then play the thousand uh, combat power rating requirement. So it's a pretty cool kind of layout. It's very basic, um, but gives you a little bit of an idea of how they want to structure this thing in the future. So like I said, nothing too crazy, but basic, simple, sweet, gets the job done. So I talked about items. Let's talk about that a little bit more and how that works. 
So I mentioned each character, each hero, however you want to kind of refer to them, they can have two weapons at this point in time. So you get two weapons and then there are three equipment slots that are currently locked and not available. As I was going and running missions, I was getting weapon drops at the end of the mission when I completed them. They're known as artifacts. So these can drop in different rarities and obviously the higher the rarity, the more affixes are available on that item. When you have a common shotgun, for instance, you don't have any affixes, it's just straight damage. When you have a rare shotgun, you have two affixes that are tied. And these are things like increased damage, crit chance, you have a chance to like leech health, that type of stuff. Those are available on these weapons. And these directly tie into that combat rating I was talking about earlier. So one thing is I'm really hoping that we see some kind of crazy effects tied to some of the higher rarity items, because right now it just seems like they're stats. Now I haven't gotten anything sort of off the wall. So if there is something out there and I just haven't gotten it, great. But at this point in time, I would love for them to see some crazy effects. Maybe they're tied specifically to a class or a hero, or they're tied specifically to a skill that you can then build around and sort of, you know, abuse that synergy, right? I'm hoping we see something like that in the future, but right now it's just not available. Now, as you go and you complete those missions, you're going to gain experience. You're going to level up, which in turn makes you more powerful. And like I mentioned, unlocks those passives and those skills. So the missions themselves are pretty straightforward. You go in, you either have a mix of wave based rooms. Sometimes you're stuck in one room and it's just survive the waves. Other times you are going through a series of different rooms that contain waves and you have a mini boss battle and then you have like sort of the big boss battle at the very end. So I've gone through a few of them and I would say twice I went room to room clearing enemies and then got to the boss at the very end. And then once I just came into this giant room that was like, hey, survive as long as you can or survive till the end. And um, then you fight the boss and you kill them and you get your loot. So the variety isn't too, too crazy there yet. But again, early game, pre-alpha. So that's sort of what we're looking at right now. Now, going through it, one of the things I really liked and immediately noticed is typically with pre-alpha games, things are pretty rough around the edges. Things are very choppy. Animations aren't so great. And it just, it, you can tell. It feels very early proof of concept, um, college product project type of thing, right? But Rift Storm actually did a pretty good job. Um, the game ran very well. I didn't have any sort of issues running it. It was very crisp. It was responsive. I was sort of impressed by that at first. Um, I jumped in and I was like, oh, wow. Like, this actually feels like a quality game. Um, so anyway, I think it's at a solid place right now. I'm very curious to see where they take it, but we can't really make a decision on it right now. It's pre-alpha. So I really just want to talk to you guys about it and say, Hey, this is something that's out there that if you liked kill squad, if you like co-op games, uh, if you like top down shooters, this is just one to keep an eye on. You can go out, wish list it. I'm going to do that. That way I can sort of keep up with its development and see if this is something that I want to continue to follow or maybe they take a different design direction and they uh, take it out of out of my realm so I'm not entirely sure but i'm curious to see what they do with it next year i want to let you guys know about it let me know in the comment section below if you guys have seen anything on rift storm and if so what are your guys thoughts on it so far so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this has been vulcan and i'll talk to you next time